Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel where in this series we try to solve technical interview questions in this case we are doing with gold I guess um, let's pick another question degree of an array why not sounds interesting I guess okay given a non-empty array of non-negative integers uh, our nums here the degree of this array is defined as the maximum frequency of any one of its elements. Okay. Your task is to find the smallest possible length of a contiguous, what contiguous? I have to Google that one. Subarray of nums that has the same degree as nums. Let's Google a bunch of stuff. So the smallest possible length of uh what's a contiguous oof uh what just google it sharing a common border touching next or together in a sequence okay so next or together in a sequence so sub sub array basically or just an array uh oh i see they, they are talking about sub arrays but uh I don't know why this is an option as an alternative. If you are talking about subarrays, this should be included, right? We'll see. Um, so our task is to find the smallest possible length of a contiguous subarray of nums uh, that, that has the same degree as nums and the degree of a non-empty array uh, is defined as the maximum frequency of any one of its elements but they do have different frequencies so the maximum probably probably is basically the one that has the most i guess so let's see uh in this case we have one two two three one right so this one has a frequency of two this also has frequency of two output is two smallest possible le length Okay, uh, the input array has a degree of 2 because both elements 1 and 2 appear twice. In the subarrays that have the same degree, of the subarrays that have the same degree, this one, this one, so we're basically with taking the one out. Here we are taking the first one out. Here taking, we're taking the 3 out and one of the ones. Okay, subarrays. The shortest length is 2, so return 2. Um, and they all have the same. Let's, let's find the smallest possible length that has the same degree. So basically, you want to see. Yeah, but wouldn't that always be the, the array that's always. <laughs> Uh, oh, mm. would that be the case? I'm just thinking. Okay, if we know that the 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 the, the degree of the array would be the one that has uh, the the greatest frequency, the smallest subarray would always be just the one that just contains that frequency, right? Let's see. Maybe not. Input one two two three one four two. Output six. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know that the frequency is uh, is three, right? What is the ah? Again, we are talking about a uh, contingent contingent separate, basically a separate that's not uh, going to be skipping uh, in between the elements so it basically has to be like that for example that's why we can subtract one of these in this case we can subtract two from here and uh, one from here and this would be the smallest one but in to get a uh, frequency of two we can also do basically the whole array right uh, because this would still give us a frequency of two so in order to find uh, the smallest array that is also contingent, basically uh, continuous, 
we can start by just removing elements from each side i guess and uh seeing if we can still have the same um uh, the same frequency right at the same degree why why wouldn't uh, be a possibility to just cut in the middle well if we cut in the middle we are only left with either choosing this one or this one right because it has to be a contiguous array so basically if we choose this one it, it, it's representative the same as if we just removed all of these if we pick this one it's representative as if we removed all of these so basically our algorithm which would be removing from the sides is doing more or less the same so we can have an algorithm that starts by removing either randomly or just directionally from either side and it will always continue to like for example if it if it goes like okay it says okay i'm, I'm gonna start from the right side if we remove the first element i see the degree uh, falls short of the tree that we're looking for so we cannot do that let's try from the other side i can like i remove this one the degree still says three right so i can actually remove this one then again i can start from the right side let's say our algorithm always like th th does that i remove the two degree falls short i cannot do that i start from the left side uh, i remove one and again the degree falls short i cannot do that so in both case in, th in this scenario where i cannot uh, go about from either side my my algorithm terminates and I can uh, give you the length of this array and this would be the smallest array so I think this is our algorithm now uh, the only thing that we also need to uh, yeah the only thing that we also need to care about is um, a function that would give us the degree of an array and the degree of an array uh, would be yeah we, we need to have the occurrences right so this would be something that uh, i'm not sure how to handle in by i'm pretty sure there should be a very platonic way of doing that uh, but i'm not not familiar i'll have to quickly google that counter from collections import counter outputs your counters into a, a very okay into a dictionary and this would be one five three five and so forth so i guess we're doing that a few moments later maybe we get some runtime issues now runtime exceeded hmm. one eternity later all right um sorry for the long pause i was I actually tried a couple of variants uh, of this algorithm and every time I was getting the runtime exceeded limit, which I kind of get it, but it's kind of also bothersome because it's not really something that you uh, you would get as a problem at a job interview. Uh, but still, I was kind of, I was kind of sure that, yeah, you can actually solve it better, I guess. And th in this case, it's a bit like, it's kind of like mathematical, I guess, uh, and it's way shorter. So uh, you can see that, uh, yeah, it got a successful submission. So we know that the algorithm works like that. So let's uh, quickly kind of go over what's happening. And um, hopefully I can kind of explain this in an intuitive way. So uh, I don't know, did we talk about this one? I think we kind of did, right? We get a, a from with with uh, this function or well library we can have the uh, actually this is a function right we can have all the the numbers we have in our array uh, mapped to their frequencies in a dictionary and if you think about runtime complexity this would be basically just going over the whole array and mapping everything into a dictionary exactly how we did in previous um, questions so basically it's for each value we're mapping once uh, basically runtime of n uh, in this case it's just an edge case if we know that the num list uh, is of length of one we just return one because there is 
basically no other way uh, you can shorten that list and you know the frequency is also one because single element so um, that's basically constant uh, time um, here is where the interesting parts happen so in this case we go over our dictionary that we have here right and actually actually I uh, yeah, I, I don't save that. Probably it's a, not a bad idea to save it for runtime, but doesn't matter right now. So we go over a dictionary because here in this dictionary, uh, we actually just save the, the maximum value. So we know that that's the degree of the array. In this case, we, we need the dictionary again. And again, we go over each of the numbers and their uh, degrees or uh, frequencies and see and look if the frequency of that number matches the, the array degree we, because actually we are only caring about the numbers in the array that have the same degree for example in this case it would be like one and two would both have the maximum degree right so they would be in a list in the end uh, in this list that would be max degree identifiers so basically one and two are the identifiers that have the same degree as the the whole array we should be looking at the, those and why should we should be looking at those is because um, if we have more than one element for example if we have only one element in this case it would be the element uh, two right because two has degree of three so frequency of three and that's the degree of the whole array it will be the single element so we know that if we um, look at the positions the relative posi well the positions of the the number two in the array that would be position one position two then three four five position six so we know uh, they are found on position two uh, pos position one and position six now if you subtract position um, six with position one we get five uh, which is the distance between the first element and the last element in and they will always be for the elements that we want to see those identifiers in our case a very simplified scenario only one identifier we always know that there will be a time where we, where we can see the very first one and sometime in the array we will also see the last one and this is the exact minimum array we can find, right? We cannot shorten this one because this is the first element and the last element that we actually want. Everything in between uh, can be anything, but also contains the other uh, same elements that comprise of the, this frequency. But the important part is we cannot, we cannot shorten this one anymore. So actually knowing this distance plus one gives us the exact length of this subarray. And this is exactly what happens here. Um, in the meantime, though we also want to look at every possible uh, identifier right for example in our first example we have the one and the two so those two compete with each other and we can actually uh, we don't really know which one results in a shorter array right this one results in an array that's basically five in length this one results in an array that's basically two in length how, how do you do that as a person? You actually look at both of them, right? You look at this one and then you look at this one. And this is exactly what we do here. Um, we, we, uh, we take, and this is the, <laughs> it looks a bit complicated, but it's not. It's a list compre comprehension inside a list uh, comprehension. So on the outside, we look for each ID in our max identifiers exactly how we uh, described it for ones and twos we look for each of them so now we actually look for example for the one so our id is one and then in the in uh, inner uh, loop we take the index and the number enumerating over the entire nums array so we know the index and the number that we're looking at and we see if this number matches the id so in this case one they match we see the index there, right? And we just return it into a subarray. This results exactly the same example, I think, well, with some changes here in the array. Uh, same identifiers though. If we apply this thingy, you get basically 
subarrays, basically array, an array containing arrays. Uh, and each of those arrays contains the indices for each of those identifiers that you're looking at. And uh, yeah, this it, it, it looks a bit complicated, but it's very good practice for me. I don't actually, I had, hadn't had the chance to write uh, arrays inside an array in, in, in list comprehension. So it was actually kind of puzzling. How do I do this? You can also call the idea from the outside. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, so a recommendation for me to, to try this one. So yeah, you get, you get, uh, basically those frequency, uh, those indices, right? So the indices indicate exactly your, uh, IDs of interest and their positions. And now we can basically just subtract. Uh, like we said, we can just subtract to get the, the distance. And of course, uh, uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, for example, looking at the distances, let's, let's look at this example. This would be index one, uh, zero, and then one, two, three, four, right? So for the one, we would have something that looks like, uh, let's hear it here zero four and for the two would have something that looks like one two right so in this return here what we do is we we look first of all for each id position so basically this is an id position uh, uh, basically each id position in id positions ids positions so basically for the id well this could be yeah, positions, I guess. So for the ID one, it's positions when we subtract the last, and this is basically notation for the last element in the array. And this is the notation for the first element in the array. And we always know that it will be resulting in, in some way like that, because we are looking at indices, right? They always start from zero, go higher, and we always gather them in this fashion. So they will always be ordered. So we can always guarantee that when we look at the first element, it will be the lo lowest in this array and the last element will be the highest. So we don't need to sort, we can save ourselves uh, some computation. And when we subtract them, we see here four minus zero is four, two minus one is one, right? And this is exactly what happens here. And now we get four, we get basically an answer that's like four and one. We pick the minimum one of those because we always want to see the, the array with the uh, lowest, right? The lowest array that we could possibly get. In this case, it would be this one and not, uh, not this one. Uh, the only thing is, well, when we subtract, we are actually uh, looking at the distance between the numbers and the distance here is one. And uh, the resulting array is actually one, one greater than, than that. Um, the distance was useful, of course, to determine which one to pick, but in the end, we also need to, sub uh, to add one to the answer and that is all. And as you can see, the answer got accepted. Um, runtime, we shouldn't really care. I've heard that, uh, these things run in, uh, on different machines every time. So sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. I wouldn't count on that. We've also noticed before even that uh, runtime is not really relevant. Memory could be better, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, when it comes to runtime complexity, uh, like we said, this would be N, right? In this case, we're looking at um, basically looping over the dictionary that we got. And the dictionary is always uh, actually smaller than the actual um, input that we got. So this is something even less than N. Uh, this thingy could get a bit messy, I guess, if we get a bunch of identifiers. For example, we get an array that's like one, two, three, four, five. So the frequency for each is one. So basically we get all of them here, right? So we loop over all of them and for each of them, we basically, uh, loop over the whole, yeah, we, we loop over the whole, uh, array again to actually find their positions. So this could be, uh, 
square, basically O of n squared, right? In the very bad last uh, worst case scenario. And maybe there, there is a way to actually improve on that. Who knows? Maybe we can save the in the in the sink beforehand uh, and save ourselves uh, this looping afterwards. Who knows? Like for example, if we don't lose, uh, use this operation, but we write a custom one. But that's just something that you can tell the interviewer, I guess, uh, for future improvements, right? You can actually probably lower this to uh, linear uh, complexity again, which is, well, I guess, pretty neat. And uh, in the end, we have a simple operation for each of those uh, arrays. And uh, it's basically how much you can get basically an array per each element, right? In this case, again, we see we will get uh, the frequency for each of those elements. And then we are doing two operations on them. So basically, again, linear. Um, in our case, well, basically our runtime complexity would be n squared plus n, I guess, something like that. And maybe plus, uh, plus something that's even uh, less than n, and probably like something logarithmic, I guess. Um, well, actually no, because in this case we would get, like exactly in this example, we would get uh, each frequency for each element and then we basically loop again over all elements. <laughs> uh, so this would be n again, right? So it's actually uh, n squared plus 2n or something like that, or 3n, uh, which it results to n. So n squared plus n would be our runtime complexity. Our space complexity, uh, you are not doing much more. I would say you are at most capping at uh, the same amount of uh, of entries that you, you, you had in the beginning, like additionally. So it would be something like O of N. I wouldn't go into details, but like this is the only place where you can have a bunch of stuff, like a bunch of lists. And in the worst case scenario, you have a single element list for each of the elements. So it's basically a bunch of lists that contain a single element and no more than the elements in the original array. So it's like, yeah, it's N, I guess. And yeah, that was it from me. Uh, it's a weird solution and a weird problem, but I actually pretty pretty much liked it. So I hope you had fun with this one. I hope you tried and see you next time. Bye bye.